Okay, so today I'm going to start off by asking you all a question, and it's a big question. If I'm honest, I haven't really thought about that much before. And that question is, what if climate change really is just a hoax? Now I know that's probably not what you expected to hear from someone who's chair of a group which was literally created to help combat climate change. But I want you to consider this. Let's assume, despite the glacier-sized pile of evidence to the contrary, that climate change really is just a hoax. Are environmental activists no more tree huggers who need to have a shave and a hobby? Is the Paris Agreement, as one world leader so eloquently put it, really just a bad deal? And are all of us in this room completely out of our minds for getting up so early on a Saturday morning to come to an event like this when we could be in bed watching Netflix? <laughs> or is that just me? I'm sure. <laughs> so to answer this, let's list some of the actions that Scotland, other countries, the world has taken so far to combat climate change. Over the last few years, we've seen investment in renewable energy, the likes of which we've never seen before, creating energy independence, which we've never had before. These investments are, as a result, creating thousands of good-paying jobs all over the world, across industries which didn't even exist in our parents' generation. People, not just vegans and veggies, meat-eaters too, are becoming more mindful about what they eat, where that food comes from, and what impact it has. We're more and more aware of the damage air pollution is doing to our public health and well-being, so much so that transport infrastructure is at the very beginning of a mass upheaval in which active travel, cycling and walking, public transport and electric vehicles are at the forefront of this change. People may be struggling to heat their homes in the winter because they can't afford to pay their bills, are being taken out of fuel poverty while simultaneously reducing their environmental impact. And kids growing up today, maybe our nieces and nephews, maybe even our own kids, are growing up in a world where being aware of environmental impact isn't something that we do once a year at Earth Day or the like, or when we go to a beach clean or a litter pick. Environmental awareness is part of daily life, from the way our governments operate to what we order for our takeaway. And if you ask me, those are all very good things. So to get back to my original question, what if climate change really is just a hoax? Have we created a better world for nothing? Because unfortunately, climate change is all too real, even more so for the poorest people on this planet. The actions we're taking to combat climate change aren't chores to be ticked off or punishments to endure. Yes, there are going to be challenging periods for some along the way, that's no doubt. But we're all actively trying to create a better world in the ways I've listed and more. And that too is also a very good thing. So why do we pose that question? I understand it's probably a dangerous question to pose. But right now, because of climate change, we're at the very beginning of redesigning the future of every sector of our society and our economy. That's of course because every sector of our society and our economy is going to be affected by climate change. So really this is a very exciting time for all of us. Climate change has given us the opportunity to design a better, fairer, more equal and just country and world. And as we do this, there are a couple of really important things that we must remember. We need to bring everyone with us, including and perhaps especially those in high polluting and high carbon jobs. Because what's the point in building a better world? while simultaneously disadvantaging thousands and thousands of people. And the second important thing to remember is young people, we need to be a part of this discussion. Call us whatever you like, millennials, but we are the consumers, citizens, employees, employers, future leaders who are gonna see the devastating effects of, of climate change. So it's only really just for us to have a meaningful seat at the table when we're talking about how we're designing our future right now. So that's why it's great to see so many of you here today to learn more about this topic. And it's especially great to see you all in what is 2018, Scotland's Year of Young People. This theme year is shining a light on some of the amazing young people that we have here in Scotland, or some many already doing amazing things for our environment. So I should say that today we're talking about topics which are huge, like complicated, and sometimes pretty scary as well. I mean, the, the future of our generation climate change, the single greatest threat facing humanity, and a just transition, a complete reworking of our society and our economy. But I urge you all to engage in these discussions positively, envision this new normal, and see it as possible. Because through our work at 2050 in our Young Leaders Development Programme, and from our engagement with young people in Scotland and around the world, we're seeing that young people taking action on environmental issues can make this movement grow into an unstoppable one. How can we do that? Well, there's a lot of us in this room today, so I'd urge you all to start conversations on these topics. 
Because we alone in this room cannot change a narrative, that's for sure. But we can continue to build a movement. And that's where the work of the 2050 group comes in. Our Young Leaders Development Programme, or our WILDP as we call it, and our Leaders Network are our ways of mobilising and organising this action, this future in Scotland. In our WILDP, it's a youth leadership programme. There are a few really good youth, youth leadership programmes in Scotland, but ours is certainly unique. With our programme focusing on leadership for a low carbon Scotland, a better Scotland, we have our USP. We couple leadership skill development with climate change education in order to create future leaders in every sector, in every region, who are connected to each other and aware of the future that we need to achieve. As we want Scotland's young people to be pushing the environmental agenda forward and nine, but crucially we also want these young people to be a key part of the solutions and the key decisions that are being taken this very moment. And we've had some fantastic, fantastic successes from so far in the programme. Um, some of the most exciting outcomes are probably the individual actions and projects which we see as a result um, from the participants. This year there were some 200 plus actions completed from the young leaders on the programme. There's some of the highlights including plastic free campaigns, pension divestment, vegan cookouts, people changing their energy, energy suppliers, someone's even creating a podcast. I could go on, but there's so many inspiring, inspiring stories to tell and I look forward to you from Benjamin later on this morning to speak a bit more about his experience. And if you think all that sounds pretty good, well of course you should. Um, and as if we plan the applications for the third year of our Young Leaders Development Programme are open now. Um, so I definitely urge you all to, all urge you all to apply if you've not, if not done so before. And today should definitely give you a good taste of what we're all about. And if you need to know more, speak to myself or anyone in a 2050 t-shirt over lunch or over the breaks today to discuss a bit more. Because I honestly believe it's one of the best personal development opportunities available in Scotland right now. And did I mention that it's free as well? It's honestly a fantastic opportunity. And I could use loads of different examples to prove this, but I'm low on time, so I'm going to tell you one story. And this person's not going to like the story. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrie Ann was the first on the first WBD starting in 2015. Although her day job was at an energy company, it's fair to say she was pretty passive when it came to climate change and climate action. She'd been quite a lot of internal leadership training at work in her, com in her company, but being exposed to new people from new businesses and new sectors was like nothing she'd done before. She described the buzz at the YLDP event as contagious, and I can certainly vouch for that as well. There's various opportunities that young leaders can grab and run the program, and Carrie Ann did this. She helped organise our second summit um, last year, and um, just as some of this year's young leaders helped organise today's event and done so, so brilliantly. Carrie Ann also had this opportunity to speak about her experience on the program at the UN Climate Change Conference in Marrakesh in 2016. And she's done an incredible job. When she finished the program, she joined our board. We were all amazed by her expertise and she quickly became vice chair of our organization. And she's done an amazing job coordinating today's event and making all happen. And she'll, yeah, as I said, maybe as a user example, but she has a fantastic example of what can be achieved through this program with a little bit of effort. And I'm hopeful there are people in this room today who can go on similar journeys while simultaneously helping Scotland with its vital transition. And I say vital transition because that's exactly what it, what it is. This goes back to what I was saying earlier. And the point we're at right now with redesigning every sector of our society and our economy as this transition really does begin. Now our charity stemmed from an idea from one person. Louise MacDonald of Young Scott challenged senior business leaders back in 2012, 2013 saying to them that right now, because of climate change, you're designing the future of Scotland. However, you're not including the future of Scotland in those discussions. Why did Louise say that? Well, firstly, because she believes in the power of young people as positive change makers for the better. But also because climate change, including being the single largest threat humanity faces today, is above all a justice issue. Across class, across gender, across nations, and across generations. And it's that generational aspect that we really focus on. It's vitally important that young people are involved in the solutions that we require across every sector, because I'm only we're going to have to live with the consequences of action or inaction that's taken today. But I believe we can do it, and a sold out event on a Saturday morning in Glasgow definitely gives me hope that we can do it. So another massive thank you for you all coming along. Uh, coming along to an event like this is often the first step to other things. Certainly for me and my journey to kind of youth leadership on climate change began when I went to the 2050 Climate Group's first summit 
in Edinburgh in 2014 at the Corn Exchange. And all that's happened since then for me and for the group were some amazing milestones along the way. But I really couldn't be more proud to stand here as chair to be a Christian young. A huge thank you as well to our funders and partners for making today possible. Our headline partner today is the Scottish Power Foundation, who do fantastic work with charities across the whole of the UK. And we also wouldn't be here without the support of SEPA, Scottish Government, Scottish Water and Young Scott. So we've got some fantastic speakers this morning to kick us off. Um, but please don't sit back, I think you can sit back and relax all day, because um, after lunch we're going to be putting you to work on various workshops, all exploring these different themes around a just transition and what that means for me and you. We're looking to gather views of everyone in this room to help guide our work and also guide the Scottish Government's work moving forward. Because in case you didn't know, we've got a very special guest coming on later on, who's going to look forward to hearing about what everyone's got to think on this topic. And one final thought for me before we move on is, remember throughout the day that we have the chance right now to create a better Scotland and a better world whilst tackling climate change. And I hope you can help join us to try and make that happen. Thank you very much.